Since uh, the NYPD didn't show up today, I uh, think I'm going to speak for them. By disbanding the SRG, we're sending the wrong message. We're telling anti-abortion protesters that they can't physically harass patients outside of Planned Parenthood. We're telling the Proud Boys that there will be nobody to protect them when they want to harass the LGBTQ outside of a library. I look forward today to today's hearing where our committee will seek to examine NYPD's strategic response group, also known as SRG. The NYPD was invited to testify but has since submitted a written statement. I agree. If we had more officers on the job and they were treated with more respect and equitably compensated for the job that they do, then we would not have to be deploying additional officers. These SRG officers are there to help precincts that are in need. They are there to remove illegal firearms and weapons from our streets and conduct investigations thereafter for violent criminals. I've been in a riot before, so I understand what it's like. If I'm getting bricks thrown at me or, or firebombs thrown at me, and uh, there's no situation where self-preservation kicks in. It's just sort of, you know, let, don't curse at me. Like, what was the situation at the time? Were the, were the police under attack? Were, were cars being burned? Were, were pro was property being damaged? I've seen nonviolent protests uh, erupt into violence because of the NYPD. I'm going to take a wild guess that my two colleagues from Queens have never been to a Black Lives Matter protest before, so they can't really judge that and are make, mainly making judgments based off of what they see on Fox News. I've been at marches that have been organized by black women because most of these movements, if you want to know where they start and you want to know who's behind them and who's making them run and who's creating solidarity, it is black women. It is black femme presenting person. All of these protests that I have been to, the violence that has been started has been by the officers that are there, that are sent there to harass us. I'm an organizer, I'm a community organizer. I do my mutual aid in, in Bed-Stuy every week. I march every week. I've been marching every week for three years. They were beating us up every week, every week, every week. The bikes, pepper spray, you name it. I don't march against SRG three or four times. We went to SRG building because those were the ones that was out here beating us up. When they show up, they, they only come in to pull up to beat us up. There's no de-escalation, they don't know nothing. When they get out, they get out with their sticks and their helmets, and they can't wait to do dirty to us. The cops are, in, in New York are already dirty, and if you start running these cops' names, these SRGs, they're, they're super dirty. Not only to us, they, they're, dirty, they're dirty against each other. There's a, there's a dude named uh, Kendu Worley, where they had to strip him of his gun because he slept with another cop's wives, and they had to strip both of the cops from their guns because they thought he was going to have a shootout in the police station. But he's on the SRG right now. That's the one who pulls up and beats us up. They play dirty tactics when they're locking you up. They'll beat you up or do whatever, but then they'll pass you off to another officer. And then that officer will pass you off to another officer. By the time you get to the station, you don't even know who the hell beat you up. Don't know his name. You can't even hold him accountable. Next, we'll hear from Maximilian Clark. Maximilian, you may go ahead. Hey, hey, everyone. Hey, Patriots. Uh, you know, I just want to bring some balance to these proceedings. 1791, when this country was first founded, our Founding Fathers gave us the Bill of Rights, ensuring that citizens would have the First Amendment right to peacefully assemble and speak their mind. Now, it's worth noting that back then, women and minorities were legally considered objects, like a throw rug or an end table, a lamp. And so, you know, citizens meant white guys, like me. And I am proud to say that 232 years later, the NYPD upholds the originalist interpretation, ensuring that I, above all others, have the right to gather and speak my mind. Everyone else can have First Amendment. You can have all the First Amendment you want when I'm done with it. So says the NYPD. Now, I've heard it said that neutrality favors the oppressor, and ugh, I can't even imagine neutrality. It would be terrible. When I go to these protests, NYPD, they come up, they ask about my kids, my vacation plans, they let me into the subway for free. If they talk to me, like they talk to some of these guys, I mean, I've seen them, you know, push pregnant women to the ground, tackle photographers. I've seen them, like, hit people with bikes, you know, 
move or I will move you, is the first thing they say to people standing peacefully. If they did that to me, oh, or even just if they didn't do violence, none of this would work. None of it. <sighs> Look, am I supposed to bring my own unprovoked violence to these protests? I mean, what am I even paying tax dollars for? I'll, I'll give you a visual. You know, people are visual thinkers. I'm a graduate of Andrew Tate's Hustler University, so I understand body language, okay? When cops are out there, they face the danger, they face the threat. So I want you to imagine, me and 30 of my guys, many of whom are unarmed, are facing off against like the Gay Straight Alliance who want like basic human rights. Which direction are the cops facing? Which way? That's right, towards the threat, protecting me. Because if they weren't there, some underweight non-binary librarian might say something mean to me. So thank God the SRG is there to power bomb them into the pavement preemptively. Oh my God, I mean, without them. So I, I, I just wanna thank God, thank Jesus for these men, and I wanna thank all of our allies in the city council and in the mayor's office, because I know that you know exactly what I'm saying. And afterwards, we can go, we can take some pictures together, and we can talk about how we're finally gonna win the race, race wars. I mean, the, sorry, we can talk about how we are, how we care about public safety public safety and property value, right? And, you know, we'll know what we're talking about and they'll know what we're talking about. Everyone knows, but it'll be fun for Dent. So, in closing, I just want to thank the city of New York for taking some of the most violent offenders off the street, domestic abusers, murderers. They're off the street and they have jobs and guns and badges. And they're not just the bodyguards of white supremacists. They're my best friends, allies, and sometimes board members. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. Next, we'll hear from Walter Matterson. Masterson? Walter? Let me go ahead. Thank you. Since uh, the NYPD didn't show up today, I uh, think I'm going to speak for them. Uh, you know, I'd just like to thank all the city council members for showing up at, for this public comment. It lets us all know how important you think this is, all right? So yeah, I'm, I'm glad that all of you are in attendance. Thank you. I just gotta say, I am appalled that people are meeting today to discuss disbanding the strategic response group in the NYPD. I mean, has anyone seen the crime statistics? All right, look at this. Um, uh, top 10 most dangerous states in America. Uh, Louisiana, Missouri, South Carolina, Arkansas, Tennessee, Alaska, Maryland. Wait, where's New York? Okay, uh, oh, oh, 36, yeah, 36. Oh, oh, here, oh, this is what I want, okay. The 50 most dangerous cities in America, right? Uh, Detroit, Memphis, Bessemer, Mobile, Monroe, Birmingham, Pine Bluff, Little Rock, St. Louis. Wait, where's New York? Where's New York? Okay, wait. I think that's the fifth safest city, oh, shit. Okay, you know what, I don't need these stupid crime statistics because I saw a, a video on libs of TikTok where uh, some guys were jumping the turnstile. So that's the, the only statistics I need. People like to complain about the SRG, but I mean, look at what they've done for the homeless. And last year there were uh, homeless people in tents all over the city. And then this year they're in, um, let me see, in cardboard boxes on the subway. So, you know, it, if we get rid of the SRG, what's next? Community policing based on de-escalation, uh, investing in communities and tackling income inequality, offering long-term solutions for housing. I mean, where does it end? By disbanding the SRG, we're sending the wrong message. We're telling anti-abortion protesters that they can't physically harass patients outside of Planned Parenthood. We're telling the Proud Boys that there will be nobody to protect them when they want to harass the LGBTQ outside of a library. We're telling Black Lives Matter protesters that they can peacefully protest without being kettled, pepper sprayed, or beaten with batons. You know, what I'm saying today <laughs> might not sound very PC, yet there are lots of uh, liberals in New York City that agree with me. Why else do you think New Yorkers passed over the many progressive candidates and, and instead nominated a police officer in the Democratic primary and then elected him in the general election? Thank you. Thank you very much for your testimony.
I'm Does anybody want to take a break, bathroom break? We can take a five minute recess. Okay. Get some water. Yeah? It's been a long day. No. no? Then let's go to the next one. Okay. Thank you. I've led hundreds of thousands of protesters through the streets of New York City. I can't tell you how much violence I've seen. And the violence I've seen has not been at the hands of the people. The violence I've seen has been state-sanctioned violence from members of the NYPD, from members of the SRG. We buy your houses, we buy your cars, we pay for you and your wife's vacations, and the people are serving notice. We are serving notice on the city council that if you do not do your job, you will no longer have a job. We are commanding and demanding that you disband the SRG. We will no longer fund our own oppression. I sit here today as a survivor of multiple incidents of police violence, which has left me with permanent damage and limited mobility in my upper body. Uh, I cannot fall asleep on the train anymore because I have been woken up by SRG uh, with a gun to my face uh, because they wanted to take up that part of the train and wanted everybody to just move to the side. So th that's who they are. There were migrants bused from Texas and Florida over a thousand miles that theoretically received asylum here in our city. They were organizing for housing outside of Watson Hotel. We gave them hot food. We gave them clothes. We provided translation services for them, for jobs, for legal aid. Like a military operation, the SRG came and scrambled them and made them abandon their belongings, made them abandon the supplies that they were gifted from the people of New York. They plowed their bikes directly into crowds. They tased people. They broke bones, musical instruments, our safety team's bikes. They broke photography equipment to destroy the evidence. They left a pregnant woman handcuffed on her stomach for over an hour. They shot legal observers with rubber bullets, stalked leaders and safety team members systematically trying to manufacture their arrests in order to disempower the movement as much as possible. Most recently, SRG happily escorted a group of Proud Boys into the subway without paying the fare. These Proud Boys had just finished attacking a drag story hour. In Officer Peter Quigley smashed my face with his baton and uh, proceeded to put me in a chokehold with the same baton uh, after throwing my friend to the ground while we were backing away. That same officer murdered a man, an unarmed black man in 2008, by the way, and was still allowed to be deployed. I've witnessed three times SRG members brutally assaulting and arresting a number of individuals who were trying to assist female patients entering a planned parenthood clinic on Bleecker Street. It's really hard to prepare this testimony with personal accounts of abuse by the SRG because as many people have spoken to today, these are really traumatic memories and so many of us have so many of them. I saw a child brutally thrown to the ground. I saw a trans woman shoved into the pavement. I saw her wig torn from her scalp and when she cr cried out, saying that as a woman she needed her wig, she was laughed at. Dude, no you're not. Come on, bro, get up. That's all New York's finest had to say to her as they dragged her along the ground, asphalt tearing her flesh. I saw batons sinking deep into skin. Even now, I can remember the sickening sound that they made. We did not even know why we were being targeted. It wouldn't be until the next day that we would hear the justification. Some member of the group had supposedly tagged a wall on the Brooklyn Bridge. Two people were hospitalized by the brutality of the NYPD that night. I was attempting to leave via one of the park's west exits, as instructed, when I was arrested. Four members of the NYPD, all of them men, much larger than me, participated in my arrest, holding my arms and legs, pinning me face down on the ground. While this was happening, one of the SRG's bikers ran up from my right. He shouted, stop resisting, stop resisting. He was holding his bicycle horizontally across his body, and he used it to strike me several times in the head and face while I was lying on the ground, unable to move. Once again, my name is Jose LaSalle. I'm the founder 
and leader of a group called Cop Watch Patrol Units, which, which I created in 2011. And that's our way of getting accountability, is making sure that people see exactly what happens to black and brown people in communities of color, and we try to give them the insight of what's happening there through our videos. I was pleading, had my hands up for the cop to release him uh, when I was tackled from behind and arrested as well. And so, you know, you get put on the transport van and I got a chance to actually speak to that man who was arrested. Um, he happened to be an immigrant. Uh, it turns out he wasn't even a protester. He lived nearby and had come outside to see what was happening. His wife and kids were still up in the apartment, no idea what happened to him, and he was wearing flip-flops. How's everybody doing? My name's John McCary. I'm a retired NYPD lieutenant. I came here just to bring a voice of, from, from the outside. Uh, I just feel a lot of what I'm hearing here today is not fact-based. I do respect everybody's <laughs> opinion. What we saw, particularly in the Bronx, June 4, 2020, and in the summer of 2020, a lot were violent riots where urine was being thrown at officers, bricks were being thrown at officers, wheelbarrows, officers were being assaulted. Yes, I, I do agree. In the, mix of, in the mix of that chaos, there were people who potentially were harmed and put under arrest situations while they, but while they put themselves there in a violent riot. And there were peaceful protesters who were saved by the NYPD. I don't believe the message of sitting here and stating that the NYPD is a racist organization. During violent situations, violence will be deployed by officers. The fact that a cop just previously testified that the statements today were not fact-based is abhorrent and insulting. Do you want this woman to show her scars? Do you want that person to show her nerve MRI, show x-rays of broken bones? They have participated in the city's violent sweeps, arrested clinic defenders, including myself, and threatened to play the LRAD, which again is a military weapon in front of young children at a drag story hour. I was targeted and brutalized by SRG officers after I refused to stop recording them on my phone. When I tried to run away, I was grabbed, beaten, and forced to my knees. They would wait for even the slightest chance to tackle someone. When none came, they would push people into the street and then arrest them for being in the street. The SRG was founded in 2015 with a budget of $13 million. Within its first year, that budget ballooned to $90 million. Total spending on this unit, including centrally allocated funds, is now estimated at more than $133 million as of the most recently passed budget. Along with the SRD's propensity for violence and misconduct, this unit is trained to target racial justice demonstrators. In the unit's training manual, examples of violent protest groups are BLM movement, Occupy Wall Street, and anti-Trump demonstrators. This bias manifests in and out of protests. Of complaints made against SRG officers that include race between 2015 and 2020, complainants were a person of color 91% of the time. This data is particularly alarming as SRG officers have now been deployed to supplement routine enforcement in 20 so-called high crime precincts. The monies that fund the SRG need to be reallocated in areas like mental health, not just for the public, but for the police as well. Take that $133 million that currently does nothing but enable the wildest dreams of some emotionally repressed white men who do not live where they work and direct that money towards our children, their education, our manufactured housing crisis, lack of social services, especially for those most affected by the SRG's violence. Policing is not a question of bad apples. It is not a task for reimagining. Policing is in fact the least imaginative, anti-black reaction to dissent and harm in our society. A society that desperately needs proactive, comprehensive, and life-affirming solutions, not the stale and predictable manifestations of white supremacy that are endemic to the overall structure of policing in America. The SRG must be disbanded and their budget must be completely removed. We will not rest until that happens. Thank you for your time.